How's it going? So, uh, I thought I'd get the 9 and 9 out. Um, I mean, it's always out, actually. But, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I guess, like, um, two things happened. Um, I woke up this morning at 9 minutes past 9, which I'm sure many of you have had that, which is no significance to anybody in the world that doesn't enjoy a bit of techno rhythm or this drum machine. But obviously, to me, it's always about uh, 9 and 9. It's quite nice. <laughs> uh, and then um, the other thing is uh, the channel's almost reached 909 subscribers, probably will have by the time this video goes up. And I thought, uh, you know, the universe is presenting some signs. I should probably get this thing out. Uh, well, actually, like I say, it's been sat on the desk. Um, I've been rewiring the studio, trying to make a bit more space. And uh, I figured, well... Um, yeah, like I might have said before, if, you, if you've if you listened to some of the other videos, I'm trying to sort out a area that I can kind of rotate equipment on and um, and also be like a place where I can, you know, do mastering a bit more easily without having to, you know, like rewire things so much, just having a dedicated like focus spot. Um, and also for, um, I really enjoy just working on like one piece of equipment quite a lot. And um, I'm finding like if you if you have like the, if you start to have like a few bits of equipment, um, it can quite be quite difficult to not want to put all of those things together, um, which might seem like an odd thing to say, but there's just, it's, I don't know what it is. It's like, uh, you know, like you've got music equipment and they can all connect. And then there's this kind of temptation to think, oh, I've got to all wire it up um, and have it all there ready so I can kind of use it at any point, you know, patch bays and mixes and all these kind of things just kind of make that, that kind of decision a quite an obvious one to make um but uh i really think like the more i kind of have like uh i often like like take a piece of equipment out of the studio and sit at the kitchen table or something with it and often just get like something a lot more focused and you just kind of get into the nuances of how like everything works for that piece of equipment um and even when it's a simple piece like the 909 is not a particularly complicated machine on the surface you're just talking levels tunes and you know the sequencer and things um but um yeah i've not sat with this box quite nearly as enough that as i should have uh, on its on its own i mean i've not had it for that many years but um i've always had it kind of like in with other stuff um and uh just having this space now just to kind of put one thing down i thought man i've got to i've got to do the 909 um already discovering some really interesting stuff just the way the volumes work between things um just the hisses um things that i kind of was aware of but just having that dedicated focus to kind of listen to them um and and just try to find those balances just like you know lowering the kick drum load so you can kind of have better noise across the rest of like the more um sort of white noise based sort of circuitry um like snare drums and cymbals and that sort of stuff um obviously like some of those things are samples but they've got lots of like white noise kind of frequencies is what i'm what i kind of mean and you just kind of lift the levels you just kind of shift the whole sort of top end top end what is it um top and tail it almost like this sort of like with uh shifting the frequencies so the bass is off and the top has come up a bit just that whole kind of shift and just makes it sound like a different different drum machine sort of reminds me of um uh you know certain sort of techno artists might use uh you know or, or or any piece of equipment for that matter that is kind of quite a well-known sound yet they seem to get something sort of super special out of it that's beyond just uh external outboard gear but just the balance of how they use it um which i thought which is it's always super fascinating um pushes you to kind of try different stuff and find uh find those little edges to boxes you might think you know already um so yeah i'm really 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 excited just to have like a space to do this and uh and i'm uh the 909 wasn't really on the list at all <laughs> um but uh uh i'm glad i've kind of put it down there um i was gonna kind of the other thing i was gonna do um thinking about like live performances and stuff and how like I don't want to lug loads of gear around um, and how I can kind of get like a decent sound in um, you know overall frequency that works on like a variety of PAs maybe and have that flexibility to dial in certain you know certain frequencies that might be either problematic or need boosting or whatever in, in particular spaces or particular PAs so I've been kind of wandering around uh, different sort of venues uh watching my partner lucia play um and it's just been really like a firm reminder of the kind of ball ache that 
can be different setups, right? Like different PAs, different mixers, different spaces, like the bar noise, all that kind of stuff. Um, so just kind of having like some equipment that can deal with that um, and then not sort of to, to rely too heavily on what might be at the venue because you just never know, right? Um, so uh, I was thinking the trouble with that is like taking a big mixer and having um, having the flexibility of some level of EQ, but then it's just too big. Taking a small mixer and you just don't have, you know, in terms of EQ, you just will not bother. Um, so uh, and then I remembered um, I'm using the Mo2 for for streaming and using the compressors and EQ, and I thought, wait a minute, <laughs> um, you know it's like this always happens have equipment for bloody years and then remember oh yeah that's why i bought that because i've always got that option but yet you forget the option so being able to use the internal eq and stuff running uh setting up like templates and things maybe in the motu uh so it's an ultralight mark three and then um even being able to edit those all a bit cumbersome on the front panel right so i can kind of have uh, and i'm thinking like the analog rhythm for this uh it sounds cool but like i just want to make that bass a bit better i just want to bring the top ends and the mids up a bit more to get rid of that what is quite often talked about this kind of muddiness that the rhythm can suffer from you can kind of get it out like on the machine on its own which is kind of my sort of main thrust of using it in isolation just to try to see like what it can do to remove that but um yeah it'd be really nice to just to kind of bring that out a little bit on on sort of outside the rhythm so I'm thinking, yeah, maybe take the Mo2, plug the rhythm into the Mo2, plug the Mo2 into the PA, and then um, I've got all the EQ and compression and extra stuff like in the Mo2 without having to to mess around too much. So I thought I'd try that out with the 9 and 9. Um, so this has a little bit of EQ and compression on it, just like quickly thrown in really. Um, but also how it distorts because uh, it's I don't know like it's a it's an it's a digital you know it's a sound card but it's analog input so and it's kind of like a um, uh, like a British EQ style emulation EQ kind of model and uh, like I think the LA2 compressions and stuff like it's lots of kind of well-known kind of approaches and uh, sort of circuitry has been modeled in software but then you've kind of got like analog inputs to do with that so I thought I wonder how it deals with distortion so I've just hammered the trim up quite high on the QMix software that comes with the Moto. I think this is like applicable for like quite a lot of the later versions, like four and five um, ultra lights. And then just driving a nine and nine, seeing you know, does it like does it sound okay? Doesn't sound too bad. So um, thinking about yeah, maybe that might be some some ways to create some energy in a live environment uh, without having to lug loads of stuff around. Um, I'm a sucker for the Mackie. I love how the Mackie sounds um and just how it distorts and how it distorts across channels um so maybe i take a small mackie that deals with just that um maybe have the mo2 there just to kind of deal with the final sort of finish on the eq curve afterwards i don't know trying some stuff out but that's quite a small footprint already rhythm mo2 small little mackie just for some distortion could be quite nice could be quite nice and i've not i wouldn't necessarily have to touch the mo2 and the mackie as much as much as i'd love to do like live eqing you know, my back can't handle a 16 channel Mackie as my, uh, and I've tried, <laughs> um, but yeah, maybe for local use, but, um, yeah, I don't know. Some quite, some like, lots of stuff like flying around in my mind in the last few days, uh, watching my partner and also just like rewiring the studio. Um, yeah, it's incredible. Just having stuff in a different place. Um, and you suddenly think, wait a minute, this thing I've had for ages, I could use in this different way. So I'm quite excited about that. Um, really enjoying just sitting with this ridiculously overpriced box. Obviously, as you've heard, I, I've only had this a handful of years. So yes, I did pay a fuck ton of money for this thing. Um, I don't recommend it. I had a reasonably well paid job for a small period of time while I dealt with stuff I didn't want to deal with. Um, and I figured I'd treat myself, you know, um, you know, not, not very often. I'm not particularly a wealthy person, so it's a big yeah, I'm broke now, <laughs> um, but you know, this feels more normal. Um, but yeah, I figured like, um, it's just the price of it. It's just the price of it. It's kind of, it is what it is. And if you want it, you got to pay the money. And if you haven't got the money, you can't have it. It's just, it's a bit shit. But um, my hope is uh, like already uh, some different artists that have borrowed it and used it and recorded with it. So that's kind of my thinking. There's many people that can kind of have um, access to that, then that's great. So um, and also, you know, try and do something good with it. Um, but yeah, it's. Uh, I thought I'd just kind of create this quick beat thing. 
uh, nine step, nothing too fancy. Just you can hear like as in the opening, just the snare drum, the snappiness, that white noise, all that hiss, I should say, that just comes out of the circuitry. Um, with that compression, you can kind of hear stuff just being lifted up and moving around, which is really cool. Um, the bass drum just sounds really fun. Um, some of the dials on mine are really like the cymbals are like really squeaky, like the 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 dials are squeaky. Like there's some I don't know some rust or something in there. Um, the guy I bought it from, uh, he was okay, but I you know he said it's it's been serviced. And I said, "Cool. The the one th the one thing I don't want it to have is an American adapter." And he said, "No, no, no, it hasn't. And that's the one thing it had." So, like, I don't know. What <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with people, but um, yeah, I was able just to convert it really quickly. So it was just it. W which I'm I'm really shit with the soldering iron, so I had to take open this thing up, remove some pins, and I hope I didn't break it, which is the the most scariest uh, soldering job I've ever done. So. Um, but you know, it's fine, it's fine. It's just a piece of bloody plastic, isn't it? If it breaks, then I can get someone to fix it, can't you, I suppose. Um, but yeah, uh, just a quick one. Um, I've got a, I've also, uh, I'm gonna do some model uh, cycle stuff. A good friend of mine has the model samples. Um, he's gonna lend it to me at some point just to do some videos on it, just to kind of, I wanna, I'm really curious about how that machine, uh like given what the cycle is and i hear the samples is kind of quite like naff by comparison i guess like or maybe doesn't have the the flexibility but i don't know like i don't i mean i list i kind of take in take on board what people might say but it's you know everyone's got their own kind of preferences and their own starting points so um there's a lot of equipment now that it gets a bad rap that can be really good and can do some interesting stuff so i'm kind of curious what the samples does based around you know um what I'm guessing they might be doing based on cycles in DX7 kind of FM world and maybe samples is like Akai kind of, you know, 90 sampler kind of world. I don't know. Might, I might be completely wrong because I've not really looked into it, but I'm curious to kind of jump in and use that a bit, but um, probably won't be a while until I can get my hands on one. But um, yeah, really liking that idea of just buying stuff, you know, like um, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a lot cheaper. Um, but yeah, so just a quick one. Um, I'm gonna do uh, I'm gonna do some um, some other equipment stuff. I'm gonna have to do like quite a lot of videos because uh, I'm gonna be away to to um, for a tour thing that I'm kind of um, a guest hanging out with, I guess um, that my partner's doing. So I'm gonna have to stack some stuff up. So probably lots of cycle stuff, some rhythm stuff. Um, I may get the MS20 out. I don't know. We'll see what see what happens. But um, excited to kind of stack some video up, videos up and, and kind of put them out there. The uh, the response for that cycles one has been pretty nuts. Like lots and lots and lots of interest. So that was quite curious um, for how. I guess like how interesting or how many people are interested in that particular machine. I don't personally think it's anything to do with my video, but the machine itself. So I can only assume that's to do with the entry level and the price point of that. So um, I guess that's a good thing because that's a really flexible machine for a really cheap price or reasonably cheap price. Um, yeah, I was super impressed with it. So compared to like the rhythm, which is, I don't know how much that's going for now. Like, it's like, is it nearly two grand or something ridiculous? Um, I don't know, it seems to be going up and up and up the older it gets. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, I don't know, we'll, but we'll mix it up, whatever, you know, whatever. Um, nice one. I will uh, leave it here and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.